Hey guys, it's Joshua with Channel, and today we're going to be talking about the very exciting 2027 EPA diesel heavy duty standards coming up. Or more importantly, how it's going to cost the diesel trucking industry billions of dollars. So if you don't know folks, the Environmental Protection Agency every few years updates their emission standards for not just trucks, but also off-road equipment, cars, all sorts of stuff. But in particular, on the Adept Ape channel, we mostly focus on diesel truck engines and some off-highway diesel engines. But today what we're going to be focusing on is the 2027 regulations. And not surprisingly, they're going to be tighter, meaning lower emissions from current standards. Now, a lot of the rhetoric that I read, and this bill is, or set of regulations is actually over 1,100 pages, and I have not read them all, but it is tightening current standards that are already there and the rhetoric is indicating that you know current diesel engines are so dirty they're polluting they're hurting our health and our lungs and we need to update them so they'll be a lot cleaner well folks that's what i like to call a false dichotomy current diesel engine emission standards are actually already very very tight and very clean there have been lots of articles already discussing how diesel engines in certain cities with new emissions components are cleaning the air now that's not to say that they don't have any emissions that they don't have any problems but i don't like hearing about how dirty diesel engines are when they're actually quite clean burning currently now if you were to say take a 1980s diesel engine and compare it to a 2027 or 2027 or even a 2015 diesel engine there's a big difference between the two. Obviously, the old ones had basically no emissions and were quite polluting, but newer diesel engines are actually very clean as far as tailpipe emissions go. Now, that's not to say that they are not consuming petroleum products. Obviously, diesel is a petroleum product, and some people don't like that. What is the actual standards going to be? Is there any new technology? And what is, where is this billions of dollars of cost coming from? So let's talk about each of those individually. So really from everything I could find, there's really not any new technology as far as the diesel engines go. It's mostly going to be, hopefully, improvements to current components. And mostly when you're talking about emissions, you're talking about Diesel particulate filters, DPFs, SCR, which is selective catalyst reduction, DEF, which is diesel exhaust fluid, and EGR, which is exhaust gas recirculation. And these systems help control the particulate matter. They help control the NOx. Those are the two big ones with diesel engines. You also have carbon monoxide, but mostly carbon monoxide is controlled by the function of the diesel engine itself. And things like common rail fuel systems have helped a lot with that. So mostly we're focusing on those emissions component systems. So the DEF, the SCR, the DPF, the EGR. And since they're basically taking the current standards and just tightening them down, and depending on which emission you're looking at, it can be anywhere from 80%, 40%. They're just tightening them down. And basically that just means to reduce NOx, then you're going to have to run more EGR or more DEF and probably going to be more DEF. Now, more DEF, DEF is a consumable, just like diesel fuel. You have to fill up your DEF tank when you fill up your diesel tank. So by using more of it to reduce emissions, it's going to cost more money. Not only that, you're going to need a bigger DEF tank, probably bigger DEF injectors, bigger SCR catalyst, hopefully better components. So those initial component costs, of course, are going to cost more money, which means the truck will cost more money. And from what I could read, there's somewhere between 800 and 900,000 new trucks sold every year. We're talking Kenworths, Peterbilts, Internationals, Freightliners. So with those being sold with these new components, it's going to cost more money, obviously. But that's not where the billions and billions of dollars of costs are coming in. That's actually tied to something else in this, not necessarily the emission standards themselves. And that is an increase in the emissions components warranty. Now, most emissions components have a 100,000 mile warranty on them. And that's good, meaning the warranty, because these are some of the least reliable components on the truck. The engines themselves nowadays are 
very reliable. They don't break down all the time. And not that they have on diesel engines for a long time. The diesel engines have been very reliable for a long time. Most of the trucks that are getting check engine lights on, it's the emissions components, particularly the DEF system, meaning the SCR, which is, if you don't know what DEF is, it is basically water and urea that they spray into the exhaust. And it basically takes NOx, which is nitrogen oxides, and breaks them down into nitrogen and oxygen. So by doing that, you are you need a DEF tank. That is, the DEF is continuously being used. You need a DEF pump. There's DEF temp sensors. There's coolant lines that run to the DEF tank. There's a DEF injector. There's what they call the SCR canister, which is very expensive. There's DEF fuel lines, DEF heater lines, because DEF's mostly water. It freezes very easily. And DEF also crystallizes when it dries out. So if you get a leak or you get DEF in, let's say, an electrical connector, it crystallizes, and that's really bad. So DEF is a troublesome product. So there are lots of repairs to DEF systems, lots of problems with DEF systems. But here's the problem. Not necessarily with the DEF system themselves. It's that warranty, the 100,000 mile warranty. It's getting bumped significantly. And some places I've read 425, some I've read 450. I'm just gonna say almost a half a million mile warranty. We'll go with 450,000 mile warranty on the emissions components. 450,000 miles. That's a lot of miles, folks, and that's a lot of potential problems with that DEF system. Now, you might be saying, well, that's good, right? Isn't a warranty great? Warranties are good. Warranties are good because they protect the truck owner, of course, from these troublesome DEF system problems. You're saying, well, okay, where's the problem coming in? The problem is someone's paying for that repair. A warranty just means you're moving the person paying for the repair from the owner of the truck back to the manufacturer, or if it was like a third-party warranty, to the third-party warranty company. But since it's sitting with the manufacturer, so let's say you buy a Peterbilt. Peterbilt is now saying, okay, we are assuming the risk of repairing your DEF system for the next 450,000 miles. And let's say you have one DEF system failure that costs $2,000 every 100,000 miles. That is now $10,000 of risk that Peterbilt has assumed. Now, sometimes those DEF system repairs are a lot more than $2,000, and sometimes it's not the DEF system. Maybe it's an EGR cooler. Maybe it's the DPF has failed. DPFs are very expensive. There's other components on that system that they're covering. So you are saying to the manufacturer, hey, you are going to now be expected to repair all of these for free for the customer. So you now have to pay for the repairs. So what do you think that's gonna do to the cost of a new truck? It's gonna send that right through the roof. Now, the low side I was seeing estimates of two to $8,000 increase. I don't see how $2,000 is even feasible. I mean, it's probably more than $2,000 in updated components on these, not counting that extended warranty period. And that seemed to be wishful thinking. What I saw that was probably more accurate was about $40,000. Now, new truck prices have been going up and up since 2020, and this is gonna further increase that significantly. So while making it basically say, hey, you need to make a vehicle that the warranty is going to cover this many miles is a great idea. The actual implementation of that, that could create some real problems. And DEF systems along that are troublesome because not every operator knows what they're doing when it comes to DEF systems. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. I Hope you learned a little bit about something. If you know more about these standards or want to say something, please leave it in the comments section. And thanks for watching.